Welcome back to Arsenal Pass Time of the Round, episode 18. Today we're joined by Sasha Markovic. Sasha was the first player banned due to living legend status. He notably won two callings back in Austin, Texas and in Auckland, New Zealand. The end result was his current job at Legend Story Studios and the chance for other players to start winning fab events and tournaments. Anyway, Sasha, thank you so much for joining us and how are you doing? Thank you for the invitation and the like glowing praise. Um, <laughs> I'll be nothing without you though. Like honestly, you, you contributed more to my flesh and blood career than anybody else. So thank you for that as well. Yeah, back in the that was it's funny because the the, the testing sessions that we did back then um, were definitely extreme for the time, but now I think it's a bit normalized. The uh, but yeah, I mean every day during your lunch, my morning is ridiculous. But yeah, oh, obviously you want a calling off of it, so all is well that ends well, right? Well, that's what I mean. Like when I say your contribution to my fab career is not about the testing; it's about the match results. I beat you in every calling that I won. So, oh yeah. That's that's something. Anyway, Sasha, let's hear about your, I guess I want to say history in Flesh and Blood, but how did you get into the game? What was, you know, I mean, let's talk about your aspirations a bit too. Like what were you looking to get out of the game when back when you were winning? And ultimately, why did you back down like a little bit and um, work for Legendary Studios? <laughs> right. Um, so I got in the game, well, historically I've played a lot of TCGs since I was a kid. I played a lot of Magic um, probably since I was 10, Kitchen Table. Once I finished um, high school, I played um, pretty more competitively. I started playing PTQs and stuff. Every summer when school was out, I would try to spike a PTQ. I got there pretty much every single time. And then, like most people, focused on my career, grew up a little bit. And then um, one of my friends from New Zealand, Jason Chung, his birthday was coming up. He sent me some, you know, Ira Bits deck saying this game's coming out. I said, all right, let's do it. Let's play some games. I haven't played TCGs in a long, long time. And yeah, I'm not sure how else to put it. Flew over for the world premiere, flew over for his birthday party, loved it. Best game ever. I haven't stopped playing since, pretty much. Well, <laughs> playing publicly, that is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you did um you did notably travel for all of the original callings. You're the only player that did that. You so you played the first New Zealand calling, Australian calling, you played in New Jersey, then you played in Austin. Um don't know how you won that one, but <laughs> and then back to back after Austin. So we have Austin, the limited calling in 2019. And then we have the constructed calling in New Zealand, the first constructed calling 2020. Um, and Sasha shows up with a little deck called Ninja Turtle. Utilizes drone of brutality, takes to the dub. And, you know, eventually the car got banned, just like Sasha himself. So great times. Anyway, Sasha. Hand so, in hand. Yeah, hand in hand. So, you, you know, you're at the peak of your career, right? You're winning. You're the champ. You're the champ champ, actually. And, you know, there's so many good things on the horizon. And you go, you know what? I don't want to be a part of this. I want to work for Legendary Studios and not be able to compete. Walk me through that. So it pretty much just stems from love, really. Like, I just fell in love with the game straight away, which is, like, attributed by the fact that I traveled to all the events. It's The opportunity cost was, like, so high for me not to go to these things because it was, like, the thing I was enjoying the most. Like, it was, like accelerated hobby more fast than anything else I ever really wanted to do. So, and having the opportunity to contribute and actually share that with everybody else, which my role is kind of attributed to do, has been like the dream come true. Don't know really how else to say it, like the dream job. Yeah, the dream job. You relocated from um, from Australia over to New Zealand. I, From what I understood when you did that, living in New Zealand was actually kind of the dream location as well. Um, so congratulations on that. Maybe it's not all it was cracked up to be now that you're in lockdown. <laughs> Eventually we'll get, yeah, we'll get back to, you know, awesome, beautiful, sunny New Zealand. I'll come visit you over here in 2022 for the pro tour, but yeah, it's fantastic. I mean, your story is one of my, my favorite stories, obviously, cause we were so close and, um, like you said, it was about love and you did really kind of achieve your dream job. I remember back when we were playing, Sasha would, um, he had this software job and he would have to travel on a train. I think it was three hours both ways. It <laughs> sounded like the most miserable thing I've ever heard of in my life. So that's uh, exaggerating. That was really happy. Yeah. Uh, no, I, it was whatever it was. It sounded bad, but I was happy when you were able to make that change. And, you know, obviously I think that since you've arrived mm -hmm. at legend story, um, a lot of good things have happened. So I think we need to, we need to know how you two came to meet though, because you know, you, you both obviously tested for the Auckland Constructor calling together, but how did that how did that come to be? I, you know, either one of you can tell the story. I feel like I'm going to get two different sides of the story, though. I but I want to hear Sasha's yeah. side because I think we might have heard friends before. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a little. I'll, I, I'll happily regale the tale. Happily, <laughs> happily yeah. regale the tale. Yeah, <laughs> go Easy. for it. So, Brendan and I met um, the day before the Austin calling uh, at the Battle Hardened event, which is uh, pretty much just like a warm up, welcome friendly event to get the spirit of players to get ready for the main event. This is in the twenty nineteen, um, right? Yeah, yeah, pretty much in the very infancy of Fab before Arcan Raising was released. And so I'm sitting at the table waiting for the event to start, and up comes along this uh, burly bu- bruiser, uh, Brendan. Uh, and uh, what did you say to me, Brendan? What's the first thing like, you ever mentioned hey, to me? Hey, I follow you on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, one of my 20 Twitter followers or something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. one of his 20 Twitter followers. Yeah. And... Uh, Obviously, I knew you by name. I did all my research, like one of my 20 day ones. That's it. Um, but no, seriously, we kind of just hit it off straight away. Um, we got to play each other in that um, Battle Hard event, and that was a pretty memorable game to me. Uh, <laughs> it's the first game I lost, actually, I think, in the state of Texas. I was like, yeah. oh. It's it was funny because um, I hadn't been losing like at all since I started the game, um, especially at events locally. Just kind of how it went, I guess, how it went with that. I just maybe picked it up a bit quicker. And as soon as I got to the Battle Harden, first game I played, I lost. And I was like, wow, I am effed. Because whatever I have thought to be successful, I have taught myself, obviously does not work. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but just got to back yourself up a little bit more. You got there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We You're got there. there. You're getting there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so that, I mean, that's the beginning of the story. Then, obviously, we hit it off. We're doing the Battle Harden with James. I actually opened a cold for your heart on that draft that we did. Um, but... Yeah, I mean, we hit it off. We're like, we go get dinner and stuff, and we're like, okay. And we're, but obviously, I knew Sasha was gonna perform well, but I had never been to a card gaming tournament in my life, like ever. Um, never competed anything like that. And he was like, "You're gonna make the finals with me. We're gonna, we're gonna be the finals." And I was couldn't believe it. Yeah, didn't believe it. Day of the calling, um, Swiss goes well. We actually opened each other's sealed pool, which was hilarious. Because in Welcome to Rate, that's like a huge deal. Because things like Palmol, Razor Reflex, these are, yeah, that's a big deal. Um, we played in like a late round, but eventually we both made top eight. I think Sasha might have been first seed, and I might have been second seed. Actually, can't remember. Um, then yeah, played through the top eight, the you know, top eight rounds, met in the finals, and had a bit of a non-game versus Sasha. Actually, I had kind of set up a pivot turn regarding snap, snapdragon scalers, and I just wrote down the damage and forgot to activate. So yeah, that was anticlimactic, but it was all good because at the end we were all friends, and I had. You know, I decided that once that happens, you know, you get the tunic, you get the money. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to put all this money towards, I'm going you know, to travel to New Zealand to play the first, you know, constructed calling over there. And, you know, kind of the rest was history. I mean, obviously the, the Auckland calling is a whole nother story where I almost just destroyed and dismantled Sasha in the Swiss rounds, but ultimately didn't get there, was one, one cycle away. And uh, I think Sasha bubbled in at eighth and I bubbled out at like 30th or something because the bubble was so big. <laughs> What, what, and, uh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. What did you almost cycle, cycle to, Brendan? I don't understand. What did you- <laughs> well, you're going to see a little card on the wall there. It's got a, it's a yellow pummel. So we had, a, we had switched the deck the night before because we're crazy. And um, we had like three spots open. We're like, you know what? We're just going to leave that three spot for the mirror. You can let it be a secret. Whatever. You can tell each other. It doesn't matter. Um, we didn't even know if we'd be able to be playing each other in Swiss. And mine was like, uh, I can't remember what it was, if it was a regurgitating slog and like a, there was like a slogism in the deck plus the pummel. And basically, I'd set up this hand and it was beyond like the third or fourth cycle of the deck. Or maybe, I think it was just third cycle of the deck. And I'd been tucking it with E-Strike and Stink Blows because the deck had so many. And it's been hiding this pummel and trying to get it very close to this dominated uh, regurgitating slog. Um, but unfortunately, I died like literally on the turn cycle before. I remember sitting across from Sasha. Obviously, we were very close to time in the round. And I remember I just... You know, flip the next four cards off the top of my deck, and it's just like, oh, it would have been, it would have been juicy. But I was happy to, see, I was happy to see him, him win. It was uh, one of the cooler experiences in my life was watching him kind of duke it out in the finals for, you know, eight hours or however long it took. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a slugger event. So, so while, while you guys are, you know, talking through your uh, your bromance and um, how it came to be. Just, just for you know, for our audience out there, because this is this is time in the round. People, people do watch this, guys. So. <laughs> but so this is 2019, right? So 2019, you yeah. guys meet meet the Austin calling. You guys start testing together. Uh, February 2020 is the the first calling, constructor calling. So um, that's the what we just talked about there, where Sasha ultimately wins with the the uh, form. It was originally named Spaghetti Tornado, right? It was the uh, the original yeah. name of the deck, and now now more commonly known as Ninja Turtle. 
Uh, I, I don't know how we didn't coin Ninja Turtle from the beginning. Or so obvious, yeah. But uh, we were just too attracted to that meme, Brendan, but yeah. that's about it. <laughs> Wait, I think we're on TTS, like, uh, not TTS, we're on untap.in, so back mm. in the day. Uh, and we just, like, randomly clicked onto this custom card game thing, and there was, like, these kids that just made their own card game, and there was this card, Spaghetti Tornado. And I don't know why. We just, like, we was like, all right, that's what we're calling. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the deck. So it was because when we were talking about it like pseudo publicly, we didn't want anyone to pick up on what we were yeah, talking it was. about. So, yeah, a code name. It's always good to have a code name. You can talk about it, like uh, you know, like kingdoms. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, like kingdoms. Like the best, the best sealed set that's ever been released, kingdoms. And then <clears throat> we get tales of Aria, You know, <laughs> tales is pretty good draft. I like draft a lot. Pretty good draft. Yeah, pretty good draft. It's a very good draft format. <laughs> I wanted the sealed part. <laughs> I want to I want to finish the story out with uh, with Sasha because I feel like we're in the midst of it now. It's interesting. So, twenty twenty get to the Orkin calling and then the world basically shuts down, right? So, Brendan, you fly home. Yep. Some would say tail between yeah. your legs. I don't know. <laughs> that's not that's not my words. I'm just that's what I've heard. Uh, <laughs> and then what happens next? What are, are you guys thinking about? Like the next event? What what uh, what? Because these online leagues start up, uh, Sasha. That's when like. Uh, we probably met a bit more. We've met at locals here in Sydney, um, but then yeah, these these events start to happen. So what like what was the next you know thing for you guys? So effectively, after the Auckland constructor calling had completed, I started my um, courting with LSS to kind of see what opportunities uh, could be available and just express my interest. And I I kind of got the signal that wait and something might happen. So I bided my time, and lockdown made it very easy to bide time. And playing the leagues was probably one of the most fun highlights of like Flesh and Blood in the last two years for me. I got to connect with a lot of people like yourself and build some cool relationships and just have a bunch of fun. It's that Arcane Rising era is always going to be like shrouded in mystery of like what actually happened and what was good and it was brute. But um, yeah, like... <laughs> A lot of most fun times. Yeah. Yeah, there was it's so funny thinking back, like people probably think of that's where Dash had its inception and then rolled into the Crystal of War format. But there was this there was a, you know, what, um seven, eight months of an Arcane Rising format that never really got explored, which is probably one of the most interesting things about this game is there's a there's an old dormant uh, you know, format effectively, um, where no one will even know what you know, unless people go back and play it. I've tried to convince Brendan multiple times that we should play old formats like Welcome to Wraith or, or Arcane Rising, but um, maybe in the future. <laughs> yeah, I feel uh, I feel a lot of, you know, kind of nostalgia for what Kano might have been back then. Because I think that, well, I mean, Crucible, obviously a lot of upgrades, but everything since Crucible of War has been just uh, very bad for Kano, which just makes me sad. You got Prism, you got Auras, you got Spell Void, and then now you got Frost. It's like, oh. <laughs> missed, your, missed your window of opportunity, Brendan. But so, they massacred my boy. <laughs> I don't think there was a more fun Kano deck than Moonwish Kano in Arcane Rising Classic. Oh, it was so that, fun. That was the most fun. Yeah. Nothing, nothing better, though, when people know you're playing and they keep an unmovable wars against you because they know what you're playing. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> so, what about you, Brendan? So, you know, Sasha starts, he keeps playing, he's playing the online leagues, he's in a, a time zone where it's a bit more friendly because these leagues are based in New Zealand, right? So, Sasha's, you know, banging out events, playing different deck after different deck. Moonwish Kano, he's playing uh he's playing Brute when no one else is touching Brute. He's playing uh these hyper aggressive boost dash decks when people are playing, you know, all these item based uh dash decks. But what about you, Brendan? What uh, what happens for you? So this is gonna be anticlimactic. I actually <laughs> stopped playing. Not because, you know, I didn't want to play the game or anything like that, but the the TTS stuff um is all hosted by, you know, stores in New Zealand or Australia. And um the lag just made me wanna you know, not want to play. It was so bad on like TTS. When you're at like that 250 ping, it's just brutal. Um, so I played like, I started playing like the league and I was like, nah, I can't do this. So I think me and Sasha just kept testing a bit on untap. Then obviously he got the tap on the shoulder. You know, they was going to go to LSS. So that started kind of started fading out. And like, I didn't really like, I stopped playing the game for a while, pretty much until Skirmish season one. Um, and like, yeah, I mean, I remember going into Skirmish season one and like, it was just hilarious to kind of be playing the game again and also playing versus North Americans because I was like, oh, wow. I'm just going to stomp all these North Americans because they've never played Flesh and Blood. But, you know, there was a few standouts, some Delficos and some others. But 
yeah, unfortunately during Arcane Rising, I did not get to play much. Yeah, with, Sasha ropes you back in into the uh, yeah, to the, or, the calling commentary, and that's that's how we met, right, Brendan? That was that is true. I forgot about that. Yeah, there was the blitz, the blitz calling. Yeah, that was how we that was how we met. Is Sasha? I had told Sasha that I always wanted to like. I thought my ult- I thought my ultimate goal was to be like a commentator because I, 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 I like. I don't know where what it came from. If it's like from you know, like insecurity or like in my skill or what, but I just because I never competed in games before, I just thought that eventually I wouldn't be good enough, um, and like people would really just kind of <clears throat> you know cruise past me. So I was really looking at commentating to kind of be a thing. So Sasha hooked us up with you know commentating the blitz calling all of that. And that's how we met, which was, by the way, that was a great time and a hilarious event because it lasted like 16 hours. I went all through my night and I was just losing my mind. Delirious. Um, but speaking, yeah, speaking towards the, um, towards like the commentating thing is funny because like that, for me, that was like a huge moment. I was like, yes, like this is going to, you know, hit off like the career that I'll have in this game or, you know, what I want to do in this game. And then after what that, what happened after that is me and Hayden met, we started testing together. We started Arsenal Pass. Then we started really testing together. And then, like, I remember I was offered to cast the calling in um, Vegas. And, like, I mean, I turned that down in 30 seconds. Like, I was like, no way. Like, I'm going to be a pro player. I'm going to try to be a world champion. Like, and just total paradigm shift. It's true. It's true. But, you know, Brendan, this episode is actually about Sasha. So, if you don't <laughs> mind, we can stop talking about you. for have been with Brendan all day, to be honest. Like, <laughs> I enjoy your content. It's, it's, like, fanciful. I do listen to Brendan all day. So that's <laughs> true. It is true. Uh, I'm just having your notes. Uh, so, like, like people probably don't know how much of a dagger that is if they don't know you personally, Aiden. But yes, great dagger. <laughs> no, it's it's um I I uh I just want to say I'm so thankful to have met both of you who are on on screen with me right now. Um, and I think this is like one of the things we wanted to to do is get get you on Sasha to chat with us because you know you you basically introduced me and Brennan uh to one another and to the reason that we we started Arsenal Pass in, in some way shape or form even to the point where when we were coming up with a name for Arsenal Pass uh Sasha was heavily involved in the process uh, shooting down all of our ideas um and yeah you know suggesting some some not so savory names I, I might add as well uh Sasha mm-hmm. like energy oh, lotion okay. Yeah, well, not all I, I can't believe you energy lotion. Yeah, that was. I thought that that would have been great. Energy lotion, romping hub, all that good stuff. But it's funny. I want to tell this story yeah. because you know, me and Hayden, we started Arsenal Pass, but Sasha and I were planning on starting some sort of content. Yeah, you know, doing some content, maybe even trying to build a website or something like that. We we're actually going to call it Crimson Haze, and we were like really set on doing this, and then. I was right about when we were about to kind of execute that plans when he got the tap on the shoulder, he's going to work at LSS. And I was like, ah, oh, I guess I won't do it. But, you know, eventually I met Mr. Dale over here and we were able to push forward. And I'm happy with where it came. Like, obviously, I think that this, like, relationship was definitely facilitated by Sasha and what that has led to. And you know, I very much appreciate it because it's been an incredible ride. I was waiting for you to Bad say... Matchmaker. Yeah, I was waiting for him to say it was a bit of a downgrade, but, you know, he's settled yeah. and it's fine. <laughs> At least the name's better. The name's yeah. better. To, to be I, fair, I, I think as well, why, that name is really interesting because it such has that Crimson Haze is like a real uh, like rooting in what the game has been, right? In terms of, obviously, Ira, but more than that, right, Sasha, can you tell us a little bit of a fact about Crimson and the color red? Or maroon, even? What do you mean? Or oh, maroon, yes, yes. Like, great tip off. So, like, there's this um, superstition that's been proven by fact that all the early calling winners uh, were wearing red at the time. And if you're wearing red, then you're just like guaranteed for success. Now, I wore that maroon jumper for both the callings that I won, so solid. So you guys get dressed up. You know what to wear. Yeah, what were right. you wearing uh, this weekend in Dallas? Uh, I was wearing a, uh, a black sweatshirt, but I did have my maroon panties on, so <laughs> it should have been good enough. <laughs> They've got to be visible. It's got to be visible, right? yeah. Like, in order for it to work, it's got to be visible. I didn't say they weren't visible. Like, <laughs> I think you made it. Cool. Very cool. <laughs> We should start a, if anyone in the comments, I think we should start a, a petition to have Brennan dye his hair red next time, actually. I think that would be mm. like, that would guarantee success almost certainly at the next calling. No chance. I like, I like, uh, I like, I like this color. I was getting some nice, some nice messages. I don't know if I was telling you, Hayden. Yeah, I was this morning. I was getting some nice messages from some gentlemen in my Instagram DMs when I posted a picture, Grant, picture the other day. It was uh, surprising. Don't write me out like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have some questions I want to ask you, Sasha, if that's all right. We've, we've talked a bit about your history. Um, 
Actually, could, you know what? We haven't really talked about it. So if, as well, you know, obviously you moved to Legend Story Studios and what is your role there? Can you tell everyone a bit about what you do um, for the company and yeah, what? Yeah, sure. Like um, it's kind of a up in the air answer, to be honest. Um, my official title is business development manager, but uh, I pretty much have my hands in a lot of pies, wear a lot of hats. Um, a lot of moving parts. You'd be quite surprised. It might seem simple and straightforward on the surface based on what you guys receive, but um, there's a lot of stuff um, underneath the hood. So that's pretty much all I can say. Like, I clearly have a software background, so I get to help out with Gem quite a bit. Um, I know there's been a lot of criticism for Gem, and it's vastly improved since like the last six months even. So pretty happy where it's at, and plenty more to come. The answer we get. Yep. <laughs> that's, that's the answer you get. He has a title. <laughs> he does some things. There's probably a lot of things that have happened in this game already. The world goes around. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's probably a lot of things that have happened in this game already that are attributed to Sasha, but we will, we will never know, I guess. Um, but no. Uh, yeah. Is it is it a secret? Is it just because I know some of the stuff you've told me and you've been in like, I mean, at least like three, what would be technically three different departments. I mean, spoilers, business development, software, like, Definitely wearing uh, quite a few many hats over there, I can imagine. Yeah, and it's been a lot of fun as well. Like, um, endless challenges, which, which is what's really cool. And we're growing so fast as well. Like, mm-hmm. it's incredible how fast we've grown. Yeah. yeah, the game has picked up a little bit of steam since you last played. I don't know if you've, uh, if you've heard. Well, the callings that I want don't even, like, scale or compare at all, really. Like, the <laughs> largest People... calling I want had 100 players. It's like nothing compared to Dallas. Dude, people, don't, people don't even count them. They're like, yeah, but this is the real call. <laughs> still got the tunics, though. Wrong. Still got the tunics. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, they're not wrong. But uh, yeah, yeah. No, it's uh, the, the, the size of the callings now are just, it's, even with Dallas, like I, was, I wasn't I was sure how many players there'd be. You know, Vegas, obviously this big event, it's in Vegas. It's, you know, it's attractive for people to go to. And I was like, you know, like Dallas, where's it going to be? But for, you know, 500 plus players to be in the main event, like that is, again, another great way to back that up. Like, you know, that is the sort of size events in, in the current situation where you've got to be happy with, right, Sasha? Oh, absolutely. Stoked. It's uh, beyond our wildest dreams. Like, the game has been public for two years. It's insane. Like, very impressive. Two years and during COVID. So that's like hardly counts as two years, right? <laughs> no pre- yeah, no precedent for that. Like, you don't even know how to evaluate. Yeah. Yeah. It's unbelievable the success that you've had. All right, so the, we know we know a bit about your background, uh, how you and Brendan met, your two calling wins, obviously. But you actually, so you top aided four callings, right? One, two, so, just to yep, clarify. that is correct. Um, move to Legend Story Studios, take a, a job, business development manager, although many more hats than that, uh, many, many fingers and pies. Um, but you did, you know, you did play for a long time. And I wanted to know about some of your, because I think, there's some cards that have changed over time, right? There's some cards that have, you know, uh, seen play in different decks. They've seen different um, exposure through the time. I think people would love to hear, what are some of your favorite cards in your time playing uh, over Flesh and Blood? Maybe you can give us one card from each of the sets that you played before you moved to, to Legend Story Studios that uh, were some of your favorite cards in your time playing. Uh, welcome to Wraith. Three cards stand out quite strongly. Like, I think my favorite card of all time is just always going to be Energy Potion because it's the risk-reward, which is always super fun to set up. And it just enables you to do the most cool and exciting things in Fab, which is just play more cards. Um, it's pretty simple for me there. Um, probably second welcome to it would be Tome of Fiendal. That, uh, that card's hype. Like, Brent and I have a lot of fun with that card. You can do a lot of fun things with that. And, like, pretty much every deck, it's not just... And Mage Master Boots helps enable that if you want to brute force it a little bit like in guardian or something but yeah um the third card would be drone like i don't think i can ever forget drone like um yeah i've won a lot of games because of that card yeah and i don't know honorable mention to this thing, <laughs> yellow pummel <laughs> yellow pummel just for brilliant yeah. you know the story of why it's yellow right yeah of course it's the pitch for drone no it's because that was the only one i had dude I oh know. come off it come <laughs> off it <laughs> I literally didn't have anything else. I had a random one from like a draft or something that we had done. And now I just threw it in my deck. Just You're so humble, cars. Brendan. So humble. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's true. your favorite card from Arcane Rising? Keep going. Just one. You know, just give one. me the one card. It's gotta Probably be changed that list. Oh, you Probably f- Azalea. Oh. Yeah. Azalea? You just name me a hero now. It's not, it's not a card. It's a token. Yeah, she's a card in the set. The token. She's a card. Fine. If I have to name an actual card, maybe three of a kind. 
Mm. Yeah. Take that. Three yeah, of Pentacles. We've talked about yeah. we've talked about Sasha's uh Azalea combo deck before. Um Sasha was the man who who played people that deck. We're really surprised that that deck existed. I thought that that was kind of common knowledge but people were very excited to get the list from us and I was like, oh, it's, it's uh, funny. I, I got a few DMs about it as well and I, I shared some of the deck lists. A lot yeah. of people are surprised that like I would kill with Exude confidence now rather than the old, you know, Art of War combos or whatever. Yeah, we're gonna have to we have to dig the list out. We'll, we'll share the original list in the in the description, Sasha. So you're gonna have to give that to us. We can share it to everyone. But it's a it's a very cool cool idea for a deck. Arcane Rising um, meta, basically, you know, drawing a million cards with Tom of Fiendale and three of a kind, and you know, gaining life to preserve your your hand for the end, and then just smashing with a big one turn kill, effectively, right? With um, there's a lot of ways to win when you have fourteen cards in your hand. Yeah, there's a lot of ways to win. <laughs> it's getting there. That's the hard part, right? <laughs> It's all yeah. about the journey. All about the journey. <laughs> yeah. Uh, crucible of War. Um, yeah. What's the most favorite kind of Crucible of War? I don't know. Like, I don't want to cop out and say Shiana like another hero again. Like, I might um, pander to Brennan a little bit and say Snag, but oh my, what the, dude? Did you just <laughs> spit in my mouth like that? Like, what the? <laughs> I was gonna say you can have Shiana because it's uh, it is a you know it's a card it's not a token and that's it so I'll I'll allow it I'll allow it. Shiana's Snag. fun because of every set no matter what you can add something new to your deck. It's, yeah. it's pretty fun. I think that I mean Snag was printed. It looks like it was printed for Chain. And Sasha, I was wondering if you could comment this. Did the testing team fail to beat Snag internally and then print Dustblade and print it in a future set because they were unaware of the power level of chain and his ability to dodge snag go yeah, you know I, you recently interviewed game developer carol right i think he's more attributed to answer this question like, uh, <laughs> i'm just a business development manager i don't know why you ask this type of question <laughs> okay i'll leave it as a theory <laughs> uh, a troublemaker <laughs> troublemaker <laughs> I know it's, dude. I, I, that's. There's one thing. There's one tinfoil hat on my head, and that one, I. Yeah, it's your hair, mate. Like. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, enough enough questions that uh, that Sasha can't answer. <laughs> Here's one question you can answer, Sasha, though, and um, you know we're all big draft fans here. Uh, Brennan's obviously just come off the back of the top eight draft at uh, at Dallas. Congratulations, by the way. That's awesome. Yep. You should just wait until you see my interview. You're going to laugh because they got me right after my loss. So I was like, he's like, how are you feeling? I was like, devastated. <laughs> well, hopefully you the can back is everything. Yeah, hopefully you can back it up in Cincinnati this weekend. But, um, you know, obviously you're a big draft fan. I'm a big draft fan. Sasha, I know you're a big draft fan. And um, talking, you know, pack one, pick one is always very interesting, right? Like taking taking cards out of packs and, you know, what's your, what's your pick in any given situation? Um, this is a video. Sasha, uh, on the yeah. Fab TCG uh, YouTube page, which is a pack one, pick one for Monarch. Uh, you can go and view yeah, this. Absolutely. Well, you know what? I, yeah, I, I keep saying I'm going to drop stuff in the description, but I'm, I, I, I'm probably going to forget by the time we put this up to drop everything in the description, but I will try. There's a Monarch pack one, pick one. Sasha's on this pack one, pick one. And um, quite clearly, to be honest. Yeah. So, okay. So, you, yeah, well, you can defend this in a second, but uh, Sasha, you pick Eclipse Existence uh, pack one, pick right. one out of a pack that has some very good cards in it. Uh, do you want to do you want to defend that action to us? No, it should have been Shadow Beast. Like, okay, he was the <laughs> no. The, you're doing that. That's the most PR answer ever. When we we roasted him when he did this, and he was like, "Yeah, you could keep you open." Not dude. that was like, I was so confused and disappointed. I mean, I almost had to like cancel our friend. I don't know. Okay, that was so yeah. surprised when the eclipse existed. But you know, speaking of pack one pick ones, or speaking of picks and draft. You also notice it notably there is a recorded draft at a calling. You're drafting brute and you let two drone of brutalities go by you. Now, Sasha, what was the strategy behind that? Strategy was that I read the spoiler like two days beforehand. Mm. And that yeah. Did not know the impact of drone at that point. So Mr. Isaac um Olsen kinda got the upper hand on all of us there. So props to him. I probably should have taken that foil sand sketch plan though. Like in hindsight, <laughs> I was yeah, like I was. I was very, oh no, it was also a foil Lord of Wind as well. Mm. I did take the sand sketch plan. <laughs> well, by the yeah, time you got to the next next time, you got you got it back on drone brutality. Obviously, you uh, you use that card to full effect uh, for future callings. I think you even had a drone brutality in your your top eight deck in Austin as well, right? 
Yeah, I learned my lesson. I had it in the Swiss portion of sealed as well. Just that you learned your lesson. Just make sure you had it in your sealed dick as well. Every single time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Let me get card. While we're talking about limited as well, Sasha, and we're just peppering you with questions here. Um, you know, what are your? Do you have an arch nemesis when it comes to limited uh, gameplay? Probably um, at Fian underscore Dale on Twitter. <laughs> it's probably it's probably that gentleman. Yeah. Like uh, I've lost more games in limited to you than anybody else. So. Well, we have to grudge mention yeah. next oh, time. Rivalry. You came to my hometown the day I was leaving Australia and just booted me right out of top eight. Yeah, famously, yeah. famously, we played a game of limited and um, Sasha lost so hard that he had to leave Australia, he had to leave the country. Um, he couldn't mm-hmm. stay any longer. I set myself up for that one. <laughs> I just want to clarify, is this this is this uh, fan underscore Dale the same one that went 2-2 drop in the, the calling in Monarch? Yeah, that, that, that one. It rings yeah. a bell. It rings a bell. Yeah. Just want to make sure. Just want to make sure. I mean, you said he was like using the legend. You know? No, he's a welcome to Wraith one trick. That's that's why. Oh, yeah. Once I exit the game, like I'm sure their motivation just dies as well. So. No, I mean, I understand though. He plays one of like the baby callings. He gets to a real call. I mean, it's still not a real call. Pretty small. And then, you know, the pressure, the lights, it just can't do it. Uh, you'll note, actually, that one, Brendan, I won my game on camera. Um, something that uh, someone in this uh, video chat has never been able to do. So... We'll be. <laughs> I'm just hyping it up for when I finally get to get that dub on camera. I'm gonna look I stupid. I'm gonna look stupid. Why do you think you'll get an extra chance? Why do you think you have more opportunities? You've had three shots. Nah, uh, because I'm going to go undefeated, and then you can't deny me. You can't deny. You can't deny me a feature match in top eight. That's. that's... We'd love to see it. We'd love yeah. to see it. Technical difficulties happen all the time, my friend. The... <laughs> well, that funny you say that because I was actually on stream at vegas round one but my camera broke so and i won that game reportedly but yeah of course yeah. <laughs> we'll see i'll get there i'll break the curse i don't know you can go back and watch all all three of them i've Believe got some me, i pre- do on repeat quite there's some, yeah there's some uh it's a there's it's a funny little little playlist there all the ways yeah. that i get wrecked there's, there's a great meme going around uh from uh, I believe Steven oh, yeah. Team Covenant might have made that meme. It's a great oh, meme. T- yeah, so Tim Bunn, Zach's brother, made it. Oh, Tim Bunn. And then yeah, Steven definitely propagated it, but it's uh, you can tell the people it is. Pretty funny. <laughs> it's a good meme. It's a good meme. Um, Sasha, I want to ask you as well, while we're just chatting, um, to give you an opportunity, I guess, to talk about anything for Flesh... You know, obviously, everyone who watches this channel is a Flesh and Blood player, I assume, uh, for the most part. Um we are coming into the end of 2021, oh my goodness, into 2022. What can, uh, what can players expect? You know, what are some things you can tell us about what's in store for 2022? As much as, you know, as much as you can, can tell us some things that could be in store for players in 2022 for Flesh and Blood. Well, like, fingers crossed, toes crossed, everything that we could uh, actually host the first Pro Tour. I think that's like what a lot of people, especially the audience, are kind of fiending for. Let's get that premium high-level content in our tournament that's worth doing it right. Like, if, if the Pro Tour can happen in 2022, like, this is going to be, like, the pinnacle for us, I think. And super excited. I would hope to be able to attend that as well. Like, um, not to compete because uh, Brendan probably wants to win some matches. But, um, yeah. <laughs> oh that's right. We just want to put him on camera. Uh, yeah. So, 2022, <laughs> first Pro Tour. Um, is there anything you can tell us about the Pro Tour? Uh, any any timeline for the Pro Tour? It'll be amazing. It'll be amazing. Okay. Yeah, that's what you can tell us. Uh, and what about what about anything else? So we have we have skirmish uh, season three about to start in November, which yeah. is going to be the first time we're going to see draft skirmish, which is really cool. Um, actually, want to so uh, industry first? Actually, industry first. Yeah, one hundred percent draft events um, that aren't like you know invitation only. Industry first. Very exciting for that to happen worldwide. So how did, how did how, yeah how did that come up? Can you tell us a bit about like how that came through LSS and how you guys decided to get to that and how you decided that that was. I, I think it's super cool. Like I, I know Brendan feels the same, but how did how do you guys come to that conclusion? Well, Tales of Aria was specifically designed with draft in mind, right? Like um, the whole like conflux of talents and um, elements being able to not force you into a hero or a class like preemptively. You can actually go do a half measure and pivot out and not just like oh, I'm going shadow and I'm going left or right. I'm going lightning and then I can either just go into any of the triads. You don't even have to commit or you can take an elemental card. You can play um, 
um, the Lightning Fuse card um, just in your Oldham deck. It's totally fine. Like it's pretty much built for draft. And why, why um, you know, give people sealed when we can just go straight to the good stuff? Yeah, yeah, I'm excited to. I think there's um, so they're they're limited in terms of there's not not every store is able to run them. So I understand, but um, there is multiple stores across regions that are running them. So there's probably one very close to you. Uh, if you do want to get your game. I know I'm I like so I was looking as soon as they announced like where's the closest one to me with draft I'm definitely getting involved with that because uh, that you know my favorite format and um, the ability to do it for a skirmish is really cool it's fun yeah but I wish Sasha you were you were actually still here in Australia so we could we could uh, battle it out in a skirmish event um, I'd love to it wouldn't make me um, it couldn't make me any happier to be honest rather than just coming over play a draft and lose to you round one and then just you know get lunch or something but yeah uh, oh, great. Sasha, do you think that Worlds will happen in 2022? Uh, have you communicated anything about Worlds? I'm not exactly sure about that. <laughs> uh, I don't think so, actually. Yeah. Uh, I think just like the... We have like the that, intention, right? Yeah. Yeah, like the macro view of like, you know, Worlds being a thing, which you, you would assume Worlds is yearly, so... Um, I guess if, pro, if from what I from what I get from you is that like the sentiment is that Pro Tour is still obviously COVID-dependent, Hopefully, we're leaning towards the side, you know, the side of it happening. Um, but yeah, you know, seems like things keep getting worse as they start to get better. So who knows? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think the contingent is like a proto would have to happen before worlds has to happen, right? So yeah. one step at a time. Yeah, exciting though. Um, what about? No, I'm just gonna keep probing because you you said, said a few things. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> we we work for the people here. Uh, is there anything you could tell us about current projects that you are working on or about to launch that maybe you've had your you know any pies that you've had your hands and that you're excited about that uh you know you can share a little bit of information about at all? Like put you on one spot. particular projects, like um, I answered some emails this morning. Is that what you want? Like <laughs> that no, potentially that's not what we want. Potentially... emails about some juicy stuff. <laughs> Well, the pies are yummy. Like, let's just say that. Like, they taste good. Do you think that um, gold foils will continue to be a top eight prize for callings? I'm not exactly sure about that, to be honest. Out of that's not my department. Mm. We we'll just we'll just keep throwing the rod. <laughs> yeah, keep like. throwing it out there. Throwing it out there. It's fun. Um, it's really I, you're, you're testing your audience and their patience. That's what you're doing here. You're not testing me. It's true. It's true. It's true. But that's okay. They they know what to expect with us, and this is uh, this. Is, I think this this uh, time in the round, especially, is a, is a good opportunity for us to have a conversation and hear a bit about like the history of of all three of us in terms of um, flesh and blood as a game, but also how we've moved into where we are right now, uh, where where Sasha's come from as well, and what Sasha's now currently doing, and um, how much Yellow Pummel was impacted. Uh, his and Brennan's lives. So, it changed also, my life. Every time I leave my door, I'm reminded that anything can happen. Your best friend can betray you, change his deck to just like you. absolutely. Like anything can happen. Just stay in your toes. Let, let's not forget, Sasha had some baloney in his deck to this. Pr- also, also, we developed the worst sideboard plan that has ever been. To- I mean, you had to be insane for the mid-range ninja matchup and then i get to face mark tongue i play this dog water deck that has all defense react i get kadachi tempoed by a freaking mid-range deck and in my benevolence i go up to sasha and i was like hey dude this sucks don't sideboard like this you know what happens he loses to mark tongue too as well but bubbles in (laughs) yeah your benevolence is always worshipped but it's um you did repent like after the loss so let's be fair yeah, did repent. I I wonder, do you guys um, does the Legend Story Studios have any plans to expand to the US in terms of like a physical office and location? I have no idea about that. Mm. Yep. It'd be interesting to see that kind of as we go forward. Um, <laughs> obviously, well, that's are like, you interested? Are, is this the starting of you quoting? Is no, that what you're no, no, absolutely yeah. not. <laughs> absolutely not. Prince of teams. You're you're competitive. The competitive scene of Flesh and Blood is way too good. I feel like the EV on joining LSS at uh, like this time is, you know, it's just not there because like everything is too awesome, right? Like it's too. We got a pro tour coming up. We're having these huge callings. Like, like it's a great time to be playing Flesh and Blood. You know, you it's still... always a great time, right? Yeah, like yeah. I still have four PTIs to my name, right? One day, who knows, they might be used. One day, they won't. Like you never know. The EV 
argument is like, what do you value? Right, right now, I value ensuring to the best of my possibility that this game grows and survives and yeah. thrives. So that, that's what I value right now. Yeah, and, and we, I think everyone owes you a lot for, for your contributions to the game so far, both from a, you know, a player standpoint and now a behind-the-scenes standpoint. And also, Brennan, you know that you can still play Flesh and Blood even if uh, even if you're on a payroll. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, for sure. I just, I'm, I'm just like, I'm so happy that everything that Sasha, myself, and James talked about in like some crappy chain restaurant in Austin, Texas, while eating queso, which is melted cheese and chips, um, has come to fruition. Like this is, we back then we would always say, how crazy would it be if we had like a like a GP. A Grand Prix for Flesh and Blood. How unbelievable would that be? But now look at us. We're in the same venues. We've got the prize wall. We've got hundreds of people. And it's just, I, that was the thing about Vegas. It's like, it really, it really kind of cemented it for me. Just like I was in a room of like thousands of people um, that like, you know, everybody had their own story for like why they were playing the game, how they got into the game. Like they had their Dorinthia deck. They played the Blitz decks. They did this. And it was just, it was surreal. Cause like you, you just don't know it. It's not real until you see it, right? So right now yeah. I'm just very excited to keep playing competitively. I'm loving like traveling to all these callings. Like, you know, we did Vegas, now we did Dallas. Next next week we're doing Cincinnati, the Nationals. Like, um, it's been, I feel like there's already it's like been it, really. There's, there's honestly nothing like it. It's some yeah. of my fondest memories from when I was younger was traveling to a lot of Magic events and other card game tournaments and stuff like that. And the friendships that you build, like I still have friendships from like 10 years ago based off magic and now i think flesh and blood is doing the same thing like clearly here we are it's awesome mm-hmm. yeah i truly feel like it's already been some of like the best experiences in my life and that will just continue i'm so excited for for the future and yeah it's just incredible especially i mean what it comes down to and it's like kind of the ethos of flesh and blood as well is like the people right playing in person like and just um you know meeting these new people creating these new relationships it's just it goes it transcends the game right like the game and the yeah. competitive aspect is fantastic, but the people that you meet and the relationships that you create are kind of um, the true victory, right? Exactly. So, I'm so say better than myself. Yeah, it's touching, Brent. It's very sentimental, and I I want to want to ask one more question to Sasha about just you know while we're on the su- su- uh, subject, what is your vision for like Flesh and Blood into the future? Not not Legend Story Studios, not you know, not what the company vision is, but like what is your personal vision? Like what do you want to see this game uh, become to to people? That anybody from any aspect of life can sit down and enjoy time playing games with their friends and family or whoever they happen to be across the table from. That that is ultimately the goal. That whether you're competitive like Brendan, haven't touched the game before, never played TCG before you play pseudo casually, whatever aspect, there's an opportunity for you to play and enjoy yourself. And that, that's ultimately like the goal. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, thank you for sharing. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> uh, Brendan, anything else you want to you talk about? I mean, I, would, I was going to bring up draft and this draft format because it's some, one that we've had lots of fun with and just ask uh, what Brendan, um, ask what Sasha's favorite you know, hero to draft is or his favorite archetype um if you don't mind sasha what uh in this current format tells varia what's your favorite archetype to draft well i'm a ranger nut so yeah, that's true um uh, yeah so i'll pretty much always be biased to drafting some type of lexi deck yep. yeah like I-, I like lightning a lot more than ice for what it's worth lightning is more fun because you can do more things like who doesn't want to do more things ice players mm, exactly. <laughs> well, then they have their corner like I, I will sit in there as well. I will sit there in that corner. So that's fine. <laughs> yeah, cool. it's a it's a really interesting format with uh, with no generics, right? Mm-hmm. Like there there is an aspect to which you are open, like you have the ability to be open. But there's so, there's actually way more um, like psychology I think that goes through with this format as well because people are trying to stay open in their element cards or and that leaves like a lot of powerful class cards going around like kind of mid to late. And then you see, like, usually around pack two, pack three, people start picking up their class cards, and sometimes that leaves powerful element cards going around. It's like, where do you want your ratio of element to class cards to be? I actually lean more towards, like, I would prefer to have a copious amount of element cards over, like, you know, a bunch of class cards, usually. Um, But the psychology of the draft is really interesting, and kind of like what you can wheel in pack three versus what you would be able to wheel in pack one differs just drastically. Yeah. 
and by players as well right like how how each player approaches it like it's crazy like there's i think there's some consensus like top picks i guess starting to come but then depending on the deck you go into or the hero plus the element you're in some cards can go from like you know unplayable in your deck to the most important card in your deck so it's like it's such a cool format um and it makes for a very difficult format to navigate i think as well in terms of drafting your seat and um reading signals and then uh you know passing cards with the intention to wheel those cards and just how likely that'll be based on what you know about the draft table so far like this every pick that you take in this draft format you can you can garner so much information from it uh from what is you know happened before what is happening in that pack and then what happens after that pack which is yeah it's it's really cool i think um playing other draft formats for other games in the past other ttgs they've they've gotten to a point where a lot of that is true but not quite to the extent where this uh three hero uh element system that allows us to play out works especially in an eight-man pod as well which is was always the kind of interesting thing where people heard there was going to be three heroes and uh, an eight-man pod for draft but it works Ooh, it works brings so well. me up to a question so sasha i want to ask you as Sasha Markovic, not Legendary Studios, hey. nothing. Yeah. So, do you think that? Um, yeah, do you think that th- three three hero draft formats are? Well, I'm going to ask you the safe question, which is, do you think they're better? And then the last safe question is like, do you think that's the future? Right? Because currently it does feel a lot better, but there's a lot of other factors. Right? There's no generics. Everything's element based, um, stuff like that. But just in your opinion, do you think that the three hero draft is better than the four hero so far? So the short answer for this is all about game design and how you want to structure the limited format. And then the heroes are there to supplement and to achieve that. Like the triad for tails just makes sense. Like if there was a fourth element, then it doesn't necessarily work. You'd have to go to five and then it's it's really messy and it's diluted in the card pool. So like three is just the just what works. Like, the four, like, it also just works. Like, you can't do three with two talents for the introduction of Shadow and Light. Like, you could have a, a Shadow, a Light, and then a non-talented, and then it's pretty much why bother having a talent. It doesn't offer any, like, dynamic decisions, where if it's, like, Shadow and you have one of each for Shadow, all of the heroes, then you can kind of pivot. Like, it's kind of like the, the layout. Like, we had Welcome to Wraith, which was, like, you just commit one of four, then you have uh, Monarch, which is like you choose one side, then you choose which side you're leaning towards. And now you have Tails, which is the triad. And it's, it's all to facilitate the design of the limited experience. Mm. Whether that's a future or not, it just depends on the experience that we want to offer. Um, now I'm imagining five hero formats with like one talent. My. <laughs> well, so... we try to reverse engineer Arcane Rising. It's kind of very interesting. Yeah. I'll go. I'll sit about that as my task for this weekend. <laughs> 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 awesome. Anyway, Sasha, thank you so much for joining us. It's always a pleasure to you know come on and talk with you. I know we haven't oh, crap. had too much time. <laughs> yeah, too it much is time. Usually a pleasure. Usually, <laughs> yeah, always, always, always. Too much. We haven't had too much time since you know things got busy over there. But you know, I va- I very much value when we are able to connect like this. But like I said, thank you. And for now, that's active player turn zero. One additional turn. It's time in the round. <laughs> Sasha, you meant to join in on it. <laughs>